and gentlemen, John Mulaney. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, it is great to be here hosting Saturday Night Live. My name is John Mullaney, and if you're watching at home and you don't know who I am, I'm sorry. Uh, I am like Louis Farrakhan. I mean a lot to a small group of people. It's a uh, leap year Saturday, and I am the first person to ever host Saturday Night Live on a leap year Saturday. It's very exciting. Yes. I am also the first host to have done the least in between his second and third times hosting. I have nothing coming up. I am here to promote the month of March. March, if winter had spring, March. Uh, clap if your father is between the ages of 60 and 75. Yeah. What's going on with them? What's wrong with them? They're so, uh, they're so emotional. My dad hugs me so tightly sometimes, I'm like, is one of us about to die? <laughs> and my dad has no friends. And your dad has no friends. <laughs> if you think your dad has friends, you're wrong. Your mom has friends, and they have husbands. <laughs> Those are not your dad's friends. Why do none of our baby boomer dads have friends? I have a few theories. One, they forgot. <laughs> Two, they want to be alone. Dads want to be alone. I'm not a dad, but I observed one. And he would go into a room and he'd read about World War II. All of our dads are cramming for some World War II quiz show. And I can't wait to watch it. We're just going to change channels and see our dads win a $900,000 on Normandy trivia. Another theory I have is that dads really only care about money. But you're not allowed to talk about money in the United States. It's taboo, so they don't have anything to talk about, so they have no friends. <laughs> a friend of mine once told me that he would rather his wife die than go through a divorce with her. He said that to me. <laughs> Later that day, I asked him, hey, what are you making this year? And he said, that's personal. <laughs> it is hard to make friends when you're an adult male. I think that's the greatest miracle of Jesus, truly, is that he was a 33-year-old man, and he had 12 best friends. And they were not his wife's friend's husbands. And he didn't meet them a long time ago in school. He met him in his 30s. 12 best friends. Remember when your dad went fishing once? These guys went fishing every day. And they were all best friends. And he'd do magic tricks for them, and they loved it. He did magic tricks to the one time that he should have done magic, and then he, he forgot to. And they were taking, that must have been disappointing for his 12 best friends. They're taking him away in chains and they're like, do the chain trick. He's like, I don't know, I don't know how to break chains. <laughs> Shifting topics entirely. <laughs> it is a leap year, as I said. Leap year began in the year 45 BC under Julius Caesar. This is true. He started the leap year in order to correct the calendar and we still do it to this day. Another thing that happened under Julius Caesar was uh, uh, he was such a powerful maniac that all the senators grabbed knives and they stabbed him to death. <laughs> That'd be an interesting thing if we brought that back now. Um, <laughs> I asked my lawyer if I could make that joke and he said, let me call another lawyer and that lawyer said yes. <laughs> I don't want to dwell on politics, but uh, I dislike the founding fathers immensely. <laughs> They're a weird group of guys. I hate when people are like, God has never created such a great group of men as the Founding Fathers. Yeah, the 92 Bulls. The 92 Bulls were better than the Founding Fathers. The 96 Bulls, maybe. That's actually a perfect metaphor uh, for the United States. When I was a boy, the United States was like Michael Jordan in 1992. And now, the United States is like Michael Jordan now. <laughs> The Founding Fathers were dumb because they made the Constitution and they numbered it and the order is weird. They sat down, they had a feather, they knew how to make a pen, they were just being jerks. They went, amendment number one, freedom of speech and freedom of assembly and freedom of religion. Okay, that's one. How about two? You can have all the guns you want! For two? How about like 17, 19? No! Two! Guns! All right, let's just put guns. He seems upset, all right? 
<laughs> Amendment number three. The army can't live in your house. <laughs> okay, buddy, I think you're going through your own thing in life right now, and uh, I feel for you. I think a soldier might be sleeping with your wife, and you want to grab a gun and kill him, and I feel for you, but that cannot affect the list. Uh, this is like a forever list, and uh, we haven't even gotten to basics, like morning time is when you eat breakfast, so... <laughs> Put it down in writing. The army can't live in your house. <laughs> And don't you thank God every day for that Third Amendment? <laughs> the other afternoon, this was Tuesday, I was in my apartment and the buzzer rang and it was 101st Airborne. <laughs> and they said, permission to live in your house? <laughs> and I went, Third Amendment. <laughs> and he said, gentlemen, he's invoked the third. <laughs> Let's fall out and find another house to live in. <laughs> A thing that we do. <laughs> in summary and in summation, uh, <laughs> a very nice thing happened to me this year. Uh, it, this was truly lovely. Uh, a young uh, woman from the Make-A-Wish Foundation uh, made it her wish to meet me. And this was very, I was very flattered by that. And I was very honored that she wanted to meet me. I was very concerned uh, that she used her wish uh, to meet me. I, I, I'm not someone, you know, you need to wish to meet. I'm around. Uh, <laughs> I take the four, five express train a lot. I take the six. You can find me. <laughs> you need the Make a Plan Foundation to find me. But I wanted to do it, and she said, I just want to see how you spend a day. And I said, oh, no, that's even worse. I wouldn't wish that on a healthy adult. So, I, don't, I didn't want her to sit around watching me eat Sour Patch Kids and repeat gossip, so... <laughs> I brought her here to Saturday Night Live because I still had my ID badge. <laughs> and I bring her into the studio, her name is Elizabeth, and they were rehearsing a big political sketch and Lin-Manuel Miranda's in the sketch playing Julian Castro. It's very exciting. And she sees Lin-Manuel Miranda and she says, is that Lin-Manuel Miranda? And I go, yeah, you want to meet Lin? I didn't know if he went by Lin or Lin-Manuel and I don't know him, but I said, come on, let's go. So I go up, I go, hey, Lin-Manuel. Uh, <laughs> This is, this is Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Lin-Manuel. And he was so nice to her and he took a photo with her and it was really a beautiful moment. And we were walking out those doors down that hallway afterwards and she was really emotional and she went, I don't know, I don't know if I should say this. And I said, Elizabeth, say whatever you want. And she said, Lin-Manuel Miranda was my first choice. <laughs> and I made her wish come true. We have got a great show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. David Byrne is here. Stick around, we'll be right back.